How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Flo and today I am bringing you a fantastic set that should be a great help when you're hunting the stronger afflicted monsters such as some of the 3 and 4 star monsters that have moves which can one shot you and some other useful tips to make your anomaly hunts easier. This set has a good mix of offensive and defensive skills to ensure maximum survivability while still dishing out great damage. The main problem that arises from people that make sets with high survivability is that their weapon turns into a wet blanket, and then they take too long to complete the hunt. And on the other hand, you might not be confident enough to run a fully optimized damage build and want at least some level of comfort in there. Well, the point of this build is to meet offense and defense in the middle and do both of those things very well. As usual, I only require that you have a talisman with two level 2 slots in order to make this build. Note that I have Wirebug Whisperer 2 and Speed Sharpening 1 on my 2 level 2 slot talisman, so if you see Wirebug Whisperer and Speed Sharpening on the build, it's from my talisman, not from the armor set itself. Those skills aren't key components of this build, they're just my comfort skills. Just use your favorite 2 level 2 slot talisman with your skills of choice. The armor pieces are gonna take a bit of work to get. Most of them do require rare monster materials, but in my opinion, this set is worth the time investment. Now let's take a look at the set pieces and explain the reasons behind the skills we chose. If you don't care about my explanation, scroll down to the description or the comment section, all the information is already there. So as you can see, our weapon of choice is the fine Kamura hammer. It's a great hammer honestly, with good raw, purple sharpness that we will extend through handicraft, and awesome slots. Seriously, one of the best hammers in the game, especially considering how easy it is to craft. These are all the armor pieces you need to craft in order to make this set. Shadi take gloves you unlock by doing Rondine's follower quests line all the way through, which is just about 5 quests. The last one sees you hunting a Kushala Daora with her, after which you will unlock this armor. Note that the male variant has a different name, it is called the Professor set, so if your character is male, you're looking for the Professor's mittens. So even if you can't be bothered to make this build, it's good to be aware of these gloves at the very least, they give you maximum divine blessing and have really good slots, it's really the perfect piece for comfort mix sets. If you don't like Evade Extender 2, you can switch out the Nargakuga Coil X for Baryoth Coil X, and if you do so, you'll only need one Expert Jewel instead of two in order to get maximum critical eye, since Baryoth gives us three points of critical eye as opposed to two from Nargakuga. But you lose out on one point of flinch free, which is good for multiplayer, and instead you get one point in part breaker and one point in critical draw. Baryoth coil is also a little bit easier to craft than the Nargakuga coil, so just choose what you prefer. Now let's take a quick look at the decorations you will need. Some of these decorations will require you to hunt some of the lower level afflicted monsters, nothing too difficult though. And once you have all of these pieces put together and the decorations slotted in, these are the skills you will get. So, as you can see, in terms of offensive skills, we have level 7 critical eye and level 4 attack boost and the indispensable weakness exploit 3 and critical boost 3. If you're wondering why we have critical eye 7 and attack boost level 4 and not the other way around, that's because we deal more damage this way. Trust me, I've done the math. In terms of defensive skills, we have defense boost 7, which gives us a really hefty boost to our total defense and a small boost to our resistances, and we also have divine blessing, which will sometimes reduce the damage we take from attacks. These two skills are really more than enough to protect you from being one shot from any afflicted monster attack, and I will of course provide the evidence with a demonstration later in this video. Make sure that you also use armor spheres to upgrade all your armor pieces as much as possible, because this actually makes quite the difference as well. We also have Stun Resistance 3 to ensure that we cannot be stunned, so once again, you're not gonna get Wombo comboed and sent back to camp. The Recovery Speed 3 is just a little bonus from the armor pieces, it won't really make much of a difference and you shouldn't rely on it, so if you get hit, either attack the monster and heal up through Blood Blight, or put your weapon away and drink a potion. I recommend staying on the offensive 9 out of 10 times, unless you're in a very dire situation. An important part of this build is the level 2 handicraft that we get from Kushala's torso. This extends the purple sharpness on our hammer quite a bit, which is great. In case you didn't know, when you're in purple sharpness, you get a damage multiplier of 1.39 as opposed to 1.32 in white sharpness and 1.2 in blue. As you can see, the gap between blue and white is much larger than the gap between white and purple. So try your best to avoid going down to blue sharpness when doing end game content if you want to complete hunts faster. The level 2 of Evade Extender is pretty nice, 
It helps you get out of the way and avoid attacks that would otherwise hit you with a normal evade. I'm personally not a fan of relying on it too much because you then find it hard to go back to normal evading and that inherently just bothers me. But I know that a lot of people love this skill and I will admit that it is helpful for avoiding attacks. So begrudgingly I say, take your evade extender and have fun with it. Level 1 flinch free is just a neat skill that pretty much everyone should have in multiplayer and the rest of the skills are just a byproduct of the armor pieces chosen for this build. Now let's talk about other ways to prepare for anomaly hunts. First things first, let's talk about dango you can eat that will help you survive. Namely, I'll mention two dango that I find most helpful when I'm not feeling confident about a hunt. The first one is dango super best nut, which sounds like a name they settled on after surviving no nut november. This gives you the Dango Defender skill which works just like Divine Blessing. Pairing this alone with our set should really help reduce damage from incoming attacks. So if you want to you can just choose Super Best Nut and have the other ones be your usual choices like Dango Slugger or whatever else you like. But if you feel like you want a bit more protection you can also take Self Kelp which gives you a skill that is also called Dango Defender. Good job on choosing the name for that one guys, well done. Anyways, the skill has the same name but it has a different effect. When you take a set amount of damage, damage from the next hit is reduced. This is great, right? Because a lot of monsters have follow-up attacks at master rank, this skill can really come in handy in those situations. My favorite setup for hunting anomaly monsters is this one right here, with the dangos in this order for hopping skewers. Remember to always use dango tickets to increase activation chance for all skills, whether you use hopping skewers or not is up to you. And just in case you're new to the series or you just forgot, do make sure that you have Power Charm, Armor Charm, Power Talon and Armor Talon in your pouch before you go on a hunt. These items increase your hunter's attack and defense. You can get these charms from the item shop and upgrade them into talons by combining the charms with an Ibushi Claw Plus. Then buy the charms again so that you have both the charms and the talons in your item pouch and always with you on quests. Now that we've had our dango and are fully prepared, let's go on an anomaly hunt to demonstrate how effective this set is at keeping you from carting and dealing good damage. The monster I'm going to choose to hunt today is Barioth because he's a 4 star anomaly hunt, which is the highest tier of difficulty that we have access to at the moment, and also because one of my viewers recently stated that his tail slam attack one shot him with his defense focused build. So I figured this would be a good choice to demonstrate that you cannot get one shot with this build. I'm also not gonna go out of my way to collect spirit birds to further illustrate this point, but obviously if you do make an effort to collect lots of them, you'll be even safer. So we're gonna make sure that we get hit by the tail slam, which won't be too hard because I always get hit anyways. I know that in my previous video I talked about how I really like afflicted monsters, and I really hope that I can get across the point that while afflicted monsters are challenging, they're very much fair fights. And as long as you prepare accordingly, you get through them just like any other hunt. Remember that the game gives you so many other ways in which you can prepare for a challenging hunt. There are a variety of methods through which you can boost your damage and defense beyond just armor and dangle, such as endemic life like spirit birds, items like might seed, adamant seed, demon drug, etc. After all, a good hunter is a prepared hunter. And you don't need to do any of these things to beat these monsters, but if you're struggling, those options are there to help you. Now, I'd like to give you a friendly reminder that I am not a speedrunner, so you're not about to watch me obliterate this Barioth, but I'm not gonna struggle either. You don't need to be a god tier gamer to get through these quests. Just be patient and make an effort to learn the monster's attack patterns, and you'll soon find yourself having a wonderful time beating up these giant creatures with your big bonk stick. So right here I've already taken some damage and I'm gonna get hit again on purpose to show you guys how good this set's defense is. But just because you can take another hit doesn't mean you should. As long as you've taken any damage, there's a very good chance that a strong attack can still cart you. So as a general rule of thumb, when you're fighting afflicted monsters, no matter how much damage you've taken, if you're not at full health, heal. By whatever means you choose, potion or attack, just heal. If you cart, it's not the game's fault, it's your fault because you didn't heal. Don't do what I'm doing here, attacking while I'm on low health. I'm just stupid and asking to get carted. And of course, as a hammer main, you want to go for the head, so do that, but also break anomaly cores on other body parts. When you pacify the monster, 
Not only do you get an opening to attack, but they also become exhausted for a period of time and monsters are much slower when exhausted and many of their attacks are less effective, giving you a lot more openings to deal damage. Anyways, enough rambling from me, I'll just let the hunt play out.
So as you can see, throughout the hunt, all the damage I took from Barioth was very manageable and really just comparable to a regular Barioth hunt. And we also finished the hunt in a decent time. Which hopefully proves that this set will keep you alive and dishing out good damage. That's all for this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Feel free to drop a comment about anything Sunbreak related down below. And until next time, happy hunting.